I got my COVID booster shot today. I'm feeling a little low from the uh, side effects, but you know what I don't feel low for? An episode of Smartless! Smart. I was just in dad hell. Uh oh. <sighs> yeah, take a deep breath. Yeah, take a couple deep breaths. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm all sweaty and my hands are dirty, which is the worst part of it. Look at the way he holds his hands like a surgeon. I haven't been able to wash my <laughs> like hands. Like working on the car. I just got a uh, 150 pound delivery from UPS, which was. Um, Maple's new um, I'm Not a Little Girl Anymore basketball hoop. Sure. Oh, I have that. <laughs> oh, God. And I just spent the good part of three hours assembling just half of it. Okay, I had to, I had to punt, and I'm going to have to do the other half tomorrow or after this. And, uh, guys, have you ever had an Ikea injury, you know, where you really haven't screwed in a bolt or anything for – like maybe ever and your forearms the next day are just ripped to hell. I'm going to have like, um, uh, uh, this is not Ikea. This is a real big boy hoop. Why not get, why not get one over the, over the garage? Like when you just put it on the garage. Well, I'd have to the, assemble that too, Sean. Oh, like and, the Cunningham's had on happy yeah, days. Yeah. Listen, the Brady first of all, Ikea, I've always said the Ikea is Swedish for argument. Uh, cause anytime you go into an Ikea store on a weekend, you just, you're going like, we don't need that. It's well, we've so already true. got the one hey, in the other room. Yeah, we got, like, doing the, yeah, we've already got the other thing. I really feel proud. There's a, there's a certain pride that comes with the, uh, the finishing of, of the assembly. For yeah. sure. Um, uh, and this one, uh, I always gonna... feel a pride when I finish. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the same thing, right? Yeah. So I'm going to feel like, um, well, I'm not going to extrapolate on your on your God, your metaphor I, 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 I there, but am, I'm going to feel so good when this is done. But it's made me late. My hands are dirty, and I'm only half done. Again, I think we're talking about the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and almost more importantly, uh, I have not had the time to do my prep for my guest today. Oh, that's okay. So yeah, so your guest. It's my. I think this is today. This is my guest. I think right. It is yes. Your guest. Yeah, it is. And Boy. yeah, well. and so this is going to be my first raw dog. I'm never... still talking about the same thing. <laughs> um, Boy, this is a long subject. Now we're talking lot. about a different thing. Wait, first of all, I missed I missed you guys last night. We, I, I was know. supposed to see you for dinner at a friend's house, and I know. I don't know was there. And, well, I well you know you. why I didn't make it because I kind of partially partially pulled my back. You did, um, and so it's all about old man for me today. That's a th- but that's a Jason, and then I I stopped by Will's house on the way home, and I texted you, "Hey, I'm stopping at Will's if you want to come did. by." I ignored that text because I was okay. so pissed off at my back. That's all right, and you didn't um, even answer him. No, I don't him. do Full that ignore. sometimes. God, you're such well, a it didn't necessitate. No, here, guess what? It. I'm going like, to read you, you the goddamn text right now. Listen to how this does not trigger a response at okay. all. Yeah. Okay. Um, missed you tonight. Period. We left because Scotty's tired. Period. Stopping off at Will's to say quick hello if you feel like jaunting over, period. Yeah. Well, I don't. And <laughs> thanks for the update. Well, we got it now. 24 wow. hours later, he got it. Hey, speaking of good friends, um, yeah. <laughs> so Sean did come over last night with Scotty. Well, we, we had a really... good friend. It's not like you just got back from the hospital and everyone's got to stop by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I texted Jason no, about but, uh, but yeah. Will's, your, your house is spectacular oh, thanks, it man. is just it is. Un- very good for you unbelievable Will. thank you thank you I think, yeah, it's, yeah, it's so beautiful it's taken a long time um but I, jay i think you're really gonna like it and we're talking about monday doing a hang um chez moi with everybody so oh sorry listener just hold on one second will decided to take your time to make some plans what is it, Will? A week from today, what I are we doing? It's been take. By the way, we just talked about you putting together a fucking basketball hoop for your daughter. Yeah, but that's, oh, but you think that's, that's cute? podcast worthy. Oh, you think that's I'm not cute? just fucking oh, hey, filling look, up hey. my file of facts with next yeah. Monday's plans. You just open to fill on. up your Google News alerts with uh, links about cute dad moment. Jason Bateman put together a cute. fucking basketball. I'm, I'm self-effacing right now. I'm, I'm talking about how soft I am. I'm texting I am. Amanda right now. I want to get a photo of you putting that together so badly. So badly. 
Oh, that oh, so great. What about, and, uh, but all the damage I did to my... I'm trying to do good things for my daughter, and the damage I did yelling at her while I'm putting this thing together. <laughs> she's asking to help. <laughs> do you think by you asking for help that you're helping? <laughs> by the way, that's a great impression of you. <laughs> <laughs> Inflections on the wrong words. <laughs> All right, let's get that to it. That is a good guest. impression love, of you. It is. I love seeing you frazzled. That's our amazing. guest has a great daughter that I bet he's nicer to than I am to mine. Okay. Um, or at least assembles more things for. So here I am, just raw dogging it right now. Um, <sighs> Please stop using Our term. guest, um, I don't have my Wikipedia in front of me, but I should know enough. He, oh. okay, so right. it's a man. Right. That part I, I did Well, you research. gave it away a while ago, but go ahead. No, no, did I really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, the, you, he has a daughter? Yeah, that yeah. was earlier, and then before that. But anyway, keep going, man. You're no, no, no. Right. Tell me who you think it is. What do you mean? Well, I, I don't know who it is, but I know that it's a he because you said yeah. he. Okay. Yeah. So it's a he. <laughs> um, oh my god, boy! He's Here a father. <laughs> <laughs> he's an actor. Do you know him? Yeah, man. Okay. And um, he's great. Okay. Um, <sighs> he's nice. Okay. Do you want to just say his name and so he, he can no, start? No, not yet. <laughs> He's funny. You, what time today did you hit fuck it? You just... <laughs> <laughs> you I spent all I had putting up half the hoop. How's your um, back now, by the way? And you know what? We're going we're gonna to find out a lot about this guest, and sure. we're going to give him a chance to tell us. Great, but I'll right. tell you what I do know. Yeah. I love him. Okay. And Will loves him. Yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. And How does Sean feel about him? Sean, I don't know if you've ever met him. But okay. you may have. We're going to find out in a second. Okay. Let's just get on with it. Yeah. Will, it's our long lost brother, Tony Hale. Come on, oh, Tony. Hello. Hey. What's up? What are you talking oh, about? I, love, was... I live for Tony Hale. Well, have you guys met? Many times. Yeah. Really? With yeah. me? No. Not with you, no. No. Okay, good. Actually, no, we did meet with you because it, oh. it was at a party years ago at your house. And Uh-oh. I went up to you, Sean, and I at said, At my house? No, at Jason's house. Okay. And I was, I said, oh, Sean, I'm a big fan. And you said, oh, I'm a big fan of yours. Come to find out later, you never watched Arrested Development, so you were lying. <laughs> no. Well, th- I'm not a lie. I'm st- I can still be a fan. He's seen the commercials, Tony. Really? Okay. okay. Two, two um, tone. Oh, but he's probably you, seen I Veep. Love Tony so right, that's I've another seen. thing I could have put in the intro that I that I can yeah. raw dog. Yeah. He's well, been if on you Veep. had said Veep, I just would have known immediately. But, exactly. Uh, but but wait, Tony, hang well, on. I just gotta absorb this guys, for a second. Tony, I'm so Tony. happy to be here. Guys, oh. that was really hard not to laugh. It's <laughs> really, really hard not to laugh. Except- oh. Tony, I, Tony, and I knew. Are we talking about the same thing? That made me laugh out loud in my mouth, in my hand. I, I'd forgotten when you were just, when you hadn't revealed yourself, I'd forgotten what a heavy breather you are. And, and so I just heard. <laughs> well, asthma, asthma, thanks for bringing it up. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah. I, I meant that in a good way, by the way. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. You don't have, I, have you had asthma for a long time? I have since I was a kid. Oh, You're that's right. I knew it. this. I yeah, knew this. Yeah, yeah. Of course I did not. What do you mean you knew this? We talked about it on your podcast. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. Has, was Tony on Hypochondriactor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no way. This yeah. is a crossover episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He played Gary Walsh on Veep. Uh-oh. We already did the intro, Jay. We already <laughs> did the intro. Down. He oh, won sorry. an Emmy in 2013 Someone and 2015 <laughs> uh, for uh, Veep. Because I know he didn't win for Arrested. I was sitting next to Tony when he won. Uh, yeah, you were. But and Jason was in front. In front. And Jason was in front when they called. Remember Jay when he got his when he got his first Emmy? How about that? He's not gonna remember. I don't remember anything. Fuck I know. You. Okay, listen, Tony. Guess what, guys? His birthday is <laughs> September thirtieth, and he's fifty-one. <laughs> good. 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 Well, I don't Tony, need the Wikipedia you? to tell me his wife's name is Martell. I oh. love her and I miss her. And yeah. Loy is still your daughter? Look, she's not. Oh, oh she's man! Oh, she retired. That's we had a hard, bad. we had a hard breakup. Oh, it didn't work out. <laughs> oh, she's 20. now she's sixteen now. Oh, wow. She's a junior in high school. She driving? Because oh, uh, Franny's about to start she's driving. She's driving. Yeah. She's driving. How did that go for you and Martell? Uh, it's been a journey. It's 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 that <laughs> it's the highways that do freak me out. Sure. A little bit the LA highways. So so I, I was driving home just now. I, I was I picked up uh, Archie from school with his pal, and I was driving back, and I was coming up Coldwater, and I see these two teenagers, 
trying to make a left-hand turn in cross, you know, in rush hour traffic. Yeah. And so I stopped to let them go because they were trying to take a left in front of me and, and to go the direction I was going. And everybody else coming down Coldwater was not having it. And these kids, they pulled out, then they went back, and, they, and I just stopped and I held and I kept flashing my light and I put my hand out the window like, guys, go. And I could see that they were barely 16. Right. And it made me so nervous for them. Yeah. And then they finally, one other person... They were confused by your kindness, right? Well, the, yeah, but the people the other way... And I just thought, as they went out, I just... I wanted... Of course, as you know, it's single lane. I wanted to pull up to them and, and teach them a lesson and, and literally go like, guys, you need to know something. Mm. Just be careful, please. You're just being... <laughs> I was so nervous uh, for them as a dad. We're such old men now. I know. Right? Just yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. You would have just been honking and saying, get the hell out of the car. I know. I know. I so, so Tony... Tony Hale, so so to Tracy, Tony. This is so fun. This is so <laughs> fun. This is amazing. Tony, <laughs> Tony and I met first. I just want to say, I know Jason, he's your guest, but I'm going to hog this. I want to say, Tony, go and I met, please. I'm unprepared. Um, oh, good. Martel, uh, Martel, his wife uh, used to work on SNL, and so our wife started the night live, the time, Tracy. Saturday Night Live, Tracy, which is a long-standing live sketch comedy. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. And when do they shoot that? <laughs> and, um, oh my God. They, so they knew each other before. So then Tony and I went out to read for Arrested Development, which is a longer mm -hmm. story. And we kind of had a little bit of a, we kind of knew each other a little bit. Like, hey, mm -hmm. hey. We had that familiarity. And we from, were both in, uh, from the halls of SNL? Because our wives knew each other. And it was mm -hmm. nerve, we were both, it was very nerve wracking. We were both staying at what was then the Intercontinental Hotel in Century City. And yeah. we walked to our test together. Yeah. No Do you remember that? Uh, Tony, for Arrested Development? For Arrested Development. Tony and oh, I together, walked over. You to, both got it. That's we crazy. We both got it. <laughs> Wait, so you walked You walked down. Sean's, yeah, spoiler Sean's alert, just Sean, now thanks. learning that we both we got it. We walked in the back gate. We went in, what's that called? The uh, the Galaxy Gate. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. went in the back together, and then we walked over and read with you and with Portia and, and Jessica and everybody. Yeah. And then we both got it. And then we walked back, and then we were like, I guess we're staying for a little bit. Yeah. Did you, correct me if I'm wrong, did we shoot the pilot right after we had that callback? Well, yeah, Tony, remember remember the next night, I, I'm good with stuff like this, Jason will tell you. Okay. I, the next it, night, we had a read What year was this, Will? This is uh, the 2003. spring. This is late February of 2003, Tony knows. Wait, how do you know <laughs> the month, freak? Because, by the way, because by the way, in this, sp this spring, it's going to be 20 years since we shot the pilot. 20 really? Years, 20 years. And when does it come out? Uh, <laughs> it's gonna turn your camera off right now, Sean. <laughs> anyway, so that's Tony it's been and I shelved for twenty years. <laughs> and then, and and I will say this, and I and I've told this, and I've said it high and wide. Frame it up there better. Is n there is nobody on the set, and Jason, you're there, and I'm I'm sorry to say, but there's nobody who cracked me up, and I think you'll attest to this too. The way Tony Hale did. David Cross. No, no, no. Oh, Tony, yeah. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> I listened, Tony would... Yeah. I listened to David's podcast you guys did with him. And, and, and Will, when you said the best joke that he said, and when he said, um, I don't know what you said, Jason, like, how are you doing? He goes, good. And he goes, well, it's going to be good. Uh, yeah, that was... Remember that? That's the that, best line ever. That was so funny. But Tony, Tony would do this thing where he'd be getting ready to... Like, he and I would both be off camera, ready to enter a scene. And he, Jason, you know he that thing where he... starts getting into Buster, And he yeah. starts getting into Buster. So you'd be talking to him about something. He goes, so like, I think we're wrapping later. And he'd go, yeah. And then, and then you'd hear the scene go, okay, I got it. And then he'd go like... And he'd bring up the Tyrannosaurus hey, Rex and, hands. And, and he'd bring his hands yeah. up like this. Yeah. And, and I would... And then I'd have to come in after him, and I'd be in tears. No. Oh, okay. Tony, so funny. fuck me, Tony, you're so goddamn funny. He oh, tucks no. the chin and brings up the T-Rex okay. hand, oh. and then he's in. God damn it. I took it really seriously. <laughs> well, really now, seriously. That, well, tell me about that. Is that, because I haven't worked with you before or since, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but... It was your? A, are you that disciplined with everything you do, or or did you think at the time this is a big deal, a big yeah. show? I better keep it tight because yeah. uh, <laughs> this feels large. Yeah, I was. I think I was so. I think all that. I was really overwhelmed. I was really intimidated, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta do the work. And so I would go back to my hotel room and I would just like practice in the mirror uh, and all that stuff and like. <laughs> Because I will say, I went up to Mitch and I asked a very actor -y question. I said, Mitch Hurwitz was the, uh, was the boss on the show, Tracy. Mitch Hurwitz, yeah. And he was the guest. I'm here, too. Oh, yeah. Sweet Tracy. And uh, I, uh, I asked him, I said, what does Buster want in life? Oh, boy. And he said, I know, it's a really actor question. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he, all he wants in life is safety. Ooh. And so then I just kind of like thought every, everything that threatened his safety, he would just like panic. 
And so he was always in a state of defense. Like his chin would go back, his hands would go back, and he was just just constantly waiting what's going to come at him. <laughs> That's really funny. Sean, you have to know, you'd be doing a scene, and then you'd be like, and even when you were rolling, and if... Tony was behind you, and you'd be having a conversation, like you say, Jason, and like, blah, 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 and then you just hear, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay. You could always hear what's going on inside. He'd sort of verbalize it. Now, um, and I have a really fat chin, which actually helped because it would just like, no, you do right. not. No, you do not. I have a question about. I, I I heard about like I don't know the process on Arrested Development. It sounds like it was a, obviously I've heard so many. Stories. Oh, it's a good it time, like Sean. Yeah, good, good shows, <laughs> good episodes, and um, I'm sure you. I like it as much as you love Save it, though. Will and Grace, you know. So, um, but I'm curious, Sean, have you seen? I mean, have you literally seen anything? I saw the first two. I laughed out loud. Oh, you did see the first two. Yeah. Okay, so it was, that was it. enough. It's yeah, not, 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 not. You're for that him. person. You're that person. You're that person. Got it. So um, <laughs> there's a problem, and it gets resolved. Okay. So, but. Um, on Veep, I heard um, that there's a there's an actual. I don't know if this is true. This I've always wanted to ask you this: that there is a process, an actual rehearsal process, like a mm. lengthy one. Can you describe that to me? Because I'm kind of really interested in that. Where you got to improvise scenes, even though they were written, or did you improvise them first, and the writers would write from what you came up with? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Armando Yunucci, who created it, he would give us. He Wait, would give how us. How do you say his name? You um, Armando Yunucci. Oh, great. Here's the day. Oh, um, Armando Iannucci. Ian, no, Armando Iannucci. Isn't it Armando Iannucci? So how many years did you guys work together? <laughs> yeah, this is uh, probably seven or eight, I think it's right? Arma Wait, Ar Armando. This is v. Arma 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 I think it's Armando Ian Iannucci. <laughs> you think? So he was a passive <laughs> producer? We would, call, we would call him Arm. We would call him Arm. 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 I didn't hey, care about his full name. Jason. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it's like, I'm pretty sure it's Armando. Um, so well, we, by the way, by the way, we, we just found our promo clip. So I might know but he would he would he would kind of give us a scenario, and the because Matt Walsh was also in Veep, you know, who's like a master improver, and he helped create UCB and all this stuff, and so all of us had to kind of get in the routine. Like it's not necessarily about coming up with funny bits. It was just kind of he just wanted to see if it gelled, and then out of that funny bits would come, but. As you guys know, we never rehearsed on Arrested. We rarely had any rehearsal on TV. No. Right. Yeah, that's why I was asking just because on Veep, so you would rehearse, what, a, a week before you even started yeah. shooting? We would shoot, oh. we would fly down, because we shot in Baltimore, so we'd fly down a couple weeks before we'd shoot and just, like, go to this room. For and just, every episode, a week for every episode. Uh, no, 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 no. No, oh, it was okay. like, we would do, like, five scripts or something like that and I just kind of feel those out. Yeah. Wow. Wait, wait, so wait, sorry, sorry. Totally confused here. What happens? So there's a script so, yeah. that's written. <laughs> yeah, there's a script that's written. Ish. So yeah, the script is. They have a really good idea of the script, and then uh, a lot is written. But then they kind of throw out. They 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 say ask to kind of throw away the script and just kind of play with the scene. So it's like we would do some of the lines and not do some of the lines. But right. it was more of just like if the if the story is working, if the relationships are working. Um, if bits do come out, but like you guys sound like storytellers. Oh, yeah. Boy. <laughs> yeah. So wait. So then. So then they would then see what you guys would improvise in addition to what is written, and then if that if the improvised dialogue is worthy of being included in this half written script, it would. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for yeah. making it sound less fun, but yeah. Well, then a week, <laughs> and then a week later, you then have a complete script, and that's the script yeah. that you would then shoot. Yeah, but even in that complete script, if stuff came out, they would be. It was a very loose, open environment. Yeah, huh? You should see. You should see Jason explain to kids on how to get on a bouncy house. He really. Sucks. <laughs> so you go and the air is pumped up, and then it keeps. I the, want you to unlace your shoes and then your socks because of <laughs> lay them outside. Your ligaments now, Tony, and the buoyancy. Of, yep. <laughs> now, Tony, I saw. I remember seeing a long time ago. Didn't you do Drunk History? Like even more than yeah, once. Several times. Yeah, I love that show. So. Fucking funny. And I learned a lot, too. By the way, dumb, dumb question, because I know nothing about that show other than it's hilarious and you're great. They really make you drink until you can't talk. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't the storyteller. I know, I know, but I mean, like, the people that are... Yeah, yeah, I think they get them really drunk, and then they have them kind of retell... Just like they're totally... That's tell, so tell the story, wild. and it's... And the thing is, it's, there's stuff that I learned from that show that I never knew. Just the, the way they said it, it was just... About puking? It was a great... 
about oh. puking, I learned a lot <laughs> about how you throw up your meals. <laughs> Tony was a Sigma Chi fraternity. Okay, oh, here we go. He's back uh, on Wikipedia. <laughs> it's, he went to Samford uh, University, oh, which was started by um, by Red Fox um, sure. Sure. and his son. Um, <laughs> I was I actually I was I'm in Nashville right now because I'm doing a, a movie here with my friend Seth Worley and it's like two hours from Alabama so I went and visited some friends from college and then Martell's family so I was just there. Come on, Samford. oh that's nice. Yeah. Did you go back to the Sigma Chi fraternity house? I did not. Where you got your journalism degree in 1992? <laughs> okay. Well, he didn't get his degree from you know he doesn't know how college works. But uh, <laughs> hey, Tony, so <laughs> you've always had. Uh, obviously well, I'm here to learn. Both you and Martell are from the South, as you just mm -hmm. sort of alluded to. Yeah. Do you ever? Uh, and you you maintain deep this Southern so, roots. This is so fun. This is so fun. You have a lot of credits it's on just here. So <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys, I don't know why. He's done a couple of episodes of Samantha Who. Okay, um, we got we to gotta get past this. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, Smartless listeners, we are supported by Verizon. You want a wireless plan that doesn't come with a catch? Then you want Visible. They're a wireless company that doesn't do catches, which means you don't need a family plan to save. Visible starts at just 30 bucks a month for a one-line wireless plan, taxes and fees included, no family plan needed. You get unlimited data and hotspot, which means you can stream as much as you want from pretty much anywhere. Seriously, it's all powered by Verizon. Yep that network. And now they have a new plan that includes 5G ultra wideband and global calling. So you score a premium network experience. Switch today at visible.com. 5G ultra wideband and global calling available only on the Visible Plus plan. For data management practices, learn more at visible.com. Additional terms apply. Smartless is brought to you in part by Nationwide. Halloween is one of my favorite uh, holidays ever of the year. I love it. It's cozy. It's it's fun to go out and celebrate. But at home, you know, we have Ricky, our dog, and I like to dress him up as uh, Falcor from uh, Never Ending Story. Anybody? Yeah, because he looks just like it even without a costume. But people go, oh, my God, is that the, the thing from the movie? I'm like, yeah, that's actually him. Trick-or-treating can be super fun for both people and pets, but it can also get scary, and not just because of things that go boop in the night. Our friends at Nationwide put together some Halloween safety tips for you and your pets. If dressing up your pet, make sure you choose a comfortable costume that won't pinch or choke, and that's free of loose wings, strings, or bows. Keep the candy bowl out of reach, please. Ingestion of chocolate or sugar-free candies can lead to a trip to the emergency room for your pet. Halloween is a common holiday for pets to get lost. Please make sure your pet is wearing up-to-date tags and is microchipped. Nationwide protects pets from unexpected frights on Halloween night and all year round. Get reimbursed for eligible expenses related to injuries, illnesses, and more. Go to PetInsurance.com slash Smartless to get a quote today. Nationwide is on your side. Thanks to Native for their support. Your shower routine. It's just that, right? A routine. You hop in, quickly lather up, rinse, and then hurry on with your day. If your shower routine needs a little refresh, then you have to try Native. Native has your back with body washes that will make that time in the shower less routine and level up that shower game. Native's Clean Effective Body Wash only uses simple ingredients that help cleanse your skin. Unlike other body washes that use sulfates to create a rich lather, Native Body Wash offers that rich lather without the use of sulfates. Native Body Wash leaves your skin moisturized, silky smooth, and residue free. When you shower with Native, you will smell amazing long after your shower thanks to their long-lasting scents. Native has a scent option for everyone. Me, you know I like s'mores, right? I toast the little marshmallow on over the stove. I put the little, you know, like graham crackers in the chocolate. I love it. But what's more, they have a scent called toasted marshmallow and vanilla. Guess where I put it? All over my body. So it doesn't just go inside my body when I eat a s'more. The smell is outside of my body and is delicious. Try keeping Scotty away from that. 
Upgrade your shower routine with Native Body Wash. Right now, go to nativedo.com slash smartless or use promo code smartless at checkout to get 40% off your first three-pack of Native Body Wash. That's nativedo.com slash smartless or use promo code smartless at checkout to get 40% off your first three-pack of Native Body Wash. nativedo.com slash smartless or use promo code smartless. All right, back to the show. Tony, so t- talk to us a little bit. So you're from the South, you grew up in the yes. South, and then you go, you move to New York. We meet in New York. Um, how did that happen? How, what was the move from college to New York, and what was, what was your goal? Uh, okay, so I moved to New York in 95, didn't know anybody. And then I, the very first theater show I did in New York was Shakespeare in the Parking Lot where we sure. did Taming of the Shrew in a parking lot. In the Wait, East are you Village. being serious? I'm dead serious. That's hysterical. And uh, and then we did that. And then I, I, you know, I had every job. I cater waited, all that stuff. I lo- actually really liked cater waitering better than waiting tables. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I cater waited all these jobs. And then I started doing commercials. And my my type was the guy who wasn't all there. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> oh, how, that's how I was him. described. Huh. And um, Now become the Tony Hale which type. Which really hasn't much, <laughs> which hasn't really changed. And so then I started doing commercials and enjoying it. Um, but it took me six years to find an agent who would send me out for uh, TV and film because they saw me just as a commercial actor. Well, Sean, you did commercials for a long time, didn't a lot, you? Yeah. Was there a lot of sort of like there, there was a thing there, like a little stigma of being like a commercial actor and the difference between that and doing film and TV? Yeah, it was just they were kind of putting you in compartments, and it was just tough to get somebody to send me out for TV, film, and theater. And there was this casting director named Marcia DeBonis. Oh, yeah. Oh, the great Marcia DeBonis. Yeah, and she actually, I don't know if you, she's the one who, well, I'd, I'd found. Cast arrested. Yeah, I'd found a manager like a year before or something, so I was kind of being sent out for stuff. And then since she cast a lot of commercials, she thought about me for this role and brought me in. That's right. Marsha did the, she did the, handled the New York ca- casting for uh, Arrested Development. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, our, and the whole, and, our, and Mitch said when I was, because Buster m- massaged people a lot. And mm-hmm. he's, and I was, in, in the audition, I was, mas- I was massaging my knees. And Mitch said, since the camera stopped here, he didn't know what I was doing down there. And it, <laughs> and it piqued an interest in the, he said, yeah, So it I'm looked out. like you were doing something else. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Right. But I was, I was just, I mean, I don't, I, I don't do you I don't know do you guys have much memory of that that shooting that pilot because I know yes. we shot it at that you yeah, do. it was down south right in uh, at the uh, Valley Studios in Manhattan Beach yep it was it was it a Manhattan Beach studio yes yes yeah because yep. I the only memory I have is I ran out I remember running out of underwear and I had to go to Old Navy to get underwear oh. and, well how and does then, one <laughs> run out of underwear is it because you do you have too many mistakes in the day I had five I, had, <laughs> I shit my pants five don't times start with Jason. Uh, I'll start with Jason. You gotta take care of the business before you leave the yeah, house. So, uh, well, Who goes shit in the middle showering. of the day? Showering. Do you shower before oh, or God. after? Oh you? my God! <laughs> yeah. Fuck God! This is a- you know, uh, Tony. Yeah. It does say here that your father okay. taught oh, nuclear and atomic physics yeah. and served in the military. Yes. Yeah, he did. And Do he went tell. to West Point. He went to West Point. Good lord! And then he taught nuclear physics after. Uh, after he was done at West Point. No, yeah, he taught there after. And then he was in the military for uh, 20 years. And we moved around. We lived in Germany and everything. Will, do you feel as bad as I do that you don't know this about Tony after all the years we've worked together? I okay. feel... What if Will's like, not really? I really do I mean, I no, will what, say... if, what if Will said, yeah, and his mom taught such and such, and but like that you knew everything about Tony and I don't. No, I, di- I didn't know that. I got to say, I am a little embarrassed to say that, yeah, Tony, that's, that I did that's not know that. that's terrible. That's I not... love that kind of stuff. Did you ever get into that with your dad? Like, did you ever talk, like, was it, did any of that interest you? Because it interests me. Uh, I don't have a dad. Being in the military? <laughs> no, that, that <laughs> asked for nuclear physics, physics. Like, you must have, but that's like a double whammy for a, a military oh, yeah, yeah, guy yeah, yeah, yeah. and a nuclear physicist to say, to, to hear his son say, I want to be an actor. You know, well, my grandfather was an opera singer. So my dad had a real appreciation for the arts. So okay. he always, always supported where I wanted to go, which do I... You have memory, do you have memories of that, of your grandfather being an opera singer? He passed away when my dad was uh, six. Oh, okay. Nice call, Will. He hit too high of a so, note. Yeah. Nice well, don't say nice guy. It's not like Tony's These sad guys are about real it. jerks, Tony. Sorry about this. <laughs> But like he he never he always they always supported me which I, is not always the case so I'm yeah. really thankful for that. 
your your mom was the one that really was against the uh, the acting stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Would, she loved it too. She did. I'm looking for controversy. He wants a real gotcha <laughs> yeah. episode here with Tony. <laughs> Wait, let me let me just go through a couple. You guys talked to him for a second. Oh, I'm going to find out what yeah, mom was Lord. doing no. during all this. So, so wait, wait, wait. You so, know, it says here. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what else it says oh here. Oh, my God. Six nominations yes. uh, for Veep alone Yeah, mm. there on the Emmys. Um, SAG Awards, three nominations, another six for Veep. Tony, I mean, how many Emmy wins for Veep? Two? Two. Uh, yeah. For you or the show? I, for him. Uh, for him. I, I think... Oh, oh, for me too. Yeah, but for the show, I, I think amazing. it was too. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's so great. Such a funny show. Yeah. It was a really, really God. fun. Experience. I I watched some of those outtakes between you and Julia, and I uh, die laughing. They're yeah. so funny. It's too, there's it's one ridiculous. scene where she has to she has to um she asked me to break up with her boyfriend for her <laughs> in the first in like the first season, and she's so close proximity to me, and it's almost I mean I remember all these moments on. Arrested. It's so impossible to not laugh. You were your great about not laughing, just, though. It's just shaking. I wasn't in Veep. Julia yeah. said to me once, "You know, you know, you're not watching the show. You're in the show, Tony." Because <laughs> I was because I was laughing so hard I couldn't keep it together. Wait, was she fantastic at not breaking? She would always dig her nails into her hands to stop laughing. I I I do that. I pinch my my thigh skin. Um, I, I, but I, I brought blood a couple. Oh, you do times. a couple of psychotic things to not laugh. Well, let's I be, used to, I used to not be able to look at Jeffrey Tambor straight in the oh, eyes man. when he would do scenes with me, and he'd yell at me for uh, like yeah. I'd be staring at like you know the side of his cheek or the tip of his <laughs> nose. He was, he was so dry. <sighs> I, my thing is though, I don't know about you guys, but there was times that we just trusted Mitch's the grid he had in his head because there were so many levels to what was going on. I had yeah. many times no idea what was going on. And I just had to trust his guidance. Most of the time, especially the, the last couple of years, um, just so complex. Very complex. There was a joke. There was a joke. Well, somebody asked me once, what was your one of your favorite bits? And aside from Tobias being in the Blue Man group, which always made yeah. me laugh hard. Oh, God. <laughs> the, the one joke when Ian um, Lesser, the, the doctor. Besser, um, right? Besser. No, Ian you know, Roberts. Ian, Ian Roberts, yes. Yeah. Ian Roberts came out. Uh, my and, favorite, one of my favorite jokes. <laughs> and he would, and and Jessica would say, "Is he is he okay?" And he would go, "Yes, he's okay." And then he says, "But his hand has been, uh, it's been severed." And they would get all mad. And I just thought that was so hilarious the way he delivered it. Well, then I was on a I was on a podcast like at the San Francisco Sketch Fest years ago in front of an audience, and I was saying that was my favorite joke. Somebody raised their hand and said, "No, no, no, that's not what he said." He says, "No." He's all right, meaning he right. has an yeah. all right hand yeah. and not a left hand. Right. So 15 years after the joke is when I finally get it. That's hysterical. <laughs> and you were in the scene. And yeah. I was in the scene. <laughs> uh-huh. That's hysterical. <laughs> I mean, just so many things I missed. I love how they would just so proudly lean into cheap jokes, you know, like the uh, the C word um, yeah. was the name of the yacht, right? <laughs> S-E-A-W-A-R-D, C word. Yes. Um, yes. And then and she the blue handprints on the wall. And then we'd call her the c word, uh, <laughs> right? Would we call mom, or she thought we were calling her the c word? So I, I, I remember, uh, you know, you called the great Matt Walsh, who was who was with you on Veep, who's a hilarious guy, one of the founding members of uh, Upright Citizen Brigade, yeah. and Ian Roberts as well. Yeah. Uh, and, and I just th those doctor moments were so dry and so funny. Oh, and so Ian, good. Ian is so good in yes. those moments. Yes. I can't imagine anybody else doing it. And he would do the, um, you know, the whole like, yes, yeah, well, we lost him. And everybody starts crying. <laughs> and they just <laughs> literally meant that they lost him. And those those moments stick with me too. Those like yeah. guys like that coming in who are just absolute assassins. Yeah. Hilarious. God damn and Mitch it. and Mitch just would just go. He would think of stuff that I would never even consider. I mean, obviously that a seal bit off my hand, but yeah. um, <laughs> one is that when Jessica was on house arrest and she couldn't smoke, and she needed me to inhale the smoke out of her mouth and oh, yeah. then blow it out on the balcony. And you had to run out on the balcony and, and blow it out. And I had to run the balcony and blow it and then come back like a baby bird and just you know suck it out of her mouth. Just That's, the most disturbing yeah, image. But, but Sean, you know what? Just keep watching. Just the two. Just the two episodes. Just Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're how gonna you, love it. Sean, how did you get when you got couldn't stop laughing? Did you just go for it, or did you keep yourself? I the Will and Grace. Yeah. Program. Wait, uh, were you on that? Yeah. It's just a Sean. Few episodes. <laughs> I've got to see that. 
No, I would, I would, I had, I'm the easiest, I can't, I'm not, I'm the opposite of a rock on stage. I laugh at anything. It's so good. Tony, you know, one of the, th one of my memories of you, one of my vivid memories in it and it's still alive today is, is what a kind person you are and how kind you are to people in your life and people around you. And it's that one of the, nice. it's one of the great things about you that makes you such a lovable and amazing person. And I remember being, when we were, shooting the show so many great moments where you were so sweet and kind and, but i remember when we had first had liza on the show oh yeah manelli and uh liza came in and out over the years and and, and was very open about being uh going through moments in her life and whatever mm -hmm. and was just and you and martel took you know you knew that she was in her hotel by herself and i remember you mm -hmm. guys describing you guys went and picked her up for dinner one night what mm -hmm. yeah and she was in the back seat with no seat belt on she had like a kid remember like we used to do back in the 70s yeah. she kind of leaned forward i remember you describing between the seats yeah, so yeah, yeah. smoking in martel and tony's car as they're driving yeah. to dinner talking she to them she, she insisted that she wanted to sit in the back seat and rolled the windows and just immediately started chain smoking and i was <laughs> like now. please i was like please don't stop like you can smoke yeah much as you want <laughs> and she where'd you started, guys go we went to the hamburger hamlet sure yeah. and uh she, she got in the back seat and she was talking about her music and talking about this concert she did at radio city music hall uh and i was like and, and, by the way i'm still absorbing that liza Minogue is my girlfriend the whole thing is just incredibly <laughs> sure. surreal and we both kissed her on the on arrested and we both kissed yeah. her and she's talking about this concert and she says oh, i sang and i said what'd you sing and she said i sang the song liza with a z and i was like oh and, and i didn't know that song stupidly and i said oh, and so she broke out in the song in the back seat of our car and she sang it and and just started singing it and she That's had done it so many times that she could hear the orchestration in her head and she'd go liza with a z ba -da -ba -ba -ba! <laughs> just smoking and i was like well i well we can die well, it's time to die guys <laughs> she's just in the back hammering yeah. darts <laughs> she's like, ba -da -ba 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 and I was just like, I, I don't know what's happening, but I'm just gonna keep driving. The free concert. I remember, I remember you coming back after that weekend, being like, "Well, yeah. we had a crazy weekend." Uh. <laughs> but then she told it. Then she would like go and and just talked about her mom, and she loved her mom, and talk about being. She grew up on the MGM lot. That was pretty much her childhood, and. I mean, but her stories never came from a place of ego. They always came from a place of like, listen to my life. Like this, yeah. is, this was my life. You know. You guys had some other big guest stars on there too, right? Marty oh, Short yeah. was on there. Yeah, oh, Marty <laughs> Short, the greatest. Just shoot me. Yeah. Yeah. He had yeah. lost use of his legs from a, a tragic <laughs> weightlifting accident, right? He was clean and jerking, and he got it up high, and then too much, and the, both legs went out from underneath him, snapped in half, and so he hired a, a bodybuilder to carry him around the rest of yeah, his life. Yeah, I remember a bodybuilder. Yeah, and he would try to get the nuts. He would like shoot for the nuts, yeah. and the guy would shoot him down so that he could get nuts. What was the name mouth. of the bodybuilder? Oh, it was some uh, great name. Uh, yeah. We had Carl Weathers. We had uh, we had Super Dave Osborne. We had yeah. um, our buddy yeah. Ed Begley was so I love him. hilarious. Yeah. yeah, obviously Henry Winkler, who's just uh, obviously Henry. Henry. Yeah. Scott Baio, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We really we got to watch them all again, and we'll do we'll do it with Sean. It'll be it'll be new to you, Sean. That'd be it fun. was a um, real embarrassment of riches, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah, it was. Um, hey, now, so. Uh, well, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I was gonna say when you're 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 always like Will was saying, always so funny, always working. By the way, mm -hmm. and when you're oh, not working, nice. what are you doing? Because I, I I like to know what rounds a person out. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually got into <laughs> making uh, rope bowls. Hang on, That's oh, my I could get into that. Can I show you? I'll yeah, show yeah, you a picture of them. A rope. So a, a bowl. friend of mine. A friend of mine. <laughs> A friend Which of mine. are you currently smoking these? <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you selling it or just smoking it now? <laughs> just for personal use? That, I, st I, started, I started doing them over the pandemic because this, this uh, my friend Shauna on the show I do, Mysterious Benedict Society on Disney Plus. Uh, Shout but, out. Um, she uh, gave me one of these as a wrap gift, and I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing. And so I started doing these over the pandemic. Oh, yeah. So look, these are, do you see them? Yes. What? Yeah. Now, r rope, it looked like uh, they pottery. Look like a ceramic. Ceramic. No, they're made out of rope. Really? And I really, it's incredibly therapeutic. Are they malleable? Like, can you move them and... Yeah, yeah. And you and you paint them. And 
and it's just like the best. What is it? What like what would you put in a rope? His ball? weed. A lot of his not weed. food. It's not a lot of weed. A lot of my weed, and oh. I just. But it's like a decorative bowl. Is and it like crochet? No, it's like you 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 do like a disc, and then you kind of mold the rope as you're sewing it, and it becomes a bowl, and then you get a leather. So I got a leather press mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, to do. Wow, you're all in to do mm -hmm. these things, and then you put a tag on there, and 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 I like to give them as gifts. You selling these? Would you sell them maybe on Etsy? Do you have a little site? I don't have an Etsy shop. I give. I, How about at any farmers markets that you go to? I should, no, for five dollars. Right. It's like slice I, off a piece of soap and sell that with it. <laughs> <laughs> with some <laughs> hunk of soap with your bowl, ma'am. <laughs> Which fun. Tony Hill, I love you so much. By the way, now does Martell help with this, or does she no. mock you? No, she mocks me. Yeah, but she uh, she got uh, uh, she likes to do uh, paint like these kind of number these painting things and well, so paint by numbers, yeah, yeah. And so we uh, we had a table, and then I would do that, and she would do that over the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then Loy um, is doing what while Loy she's watching her like, parents go off the end, just shaking her head. Yeah, just I kind of get it. I kind of want to take up crochet or something like that. You know, or like I get like the like the mindset of like you it's really check out. I put on these headphones, and I listen yeah. to music, and it's just super meditative. And it's yeah. also I'm not a painter, but I get to paint the rope, so that's kind of fun. And it's just very like uh, soothing. Yeah, yeah it's Shani, you should do that, or 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 you could or tie like a stone to your your leg and then uh, and then go oh, to the marina. Yeah, and see if you <laughs> see how many times you can get back up to the surface. Okay. You guys, <laughs> you guys, can somebody give me a lift? Or? Hey, wait. So, Tony, so you're doing that, but if you're yeah. not pressing the leather, uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. what what else are you doing? Are you reading these days? Are you doing, uh, like... Are you watching telly? I watch a lot of uh, YouTube. <laughs> I okay. like, like, like... Arts and crafts <laughs> station? No, I... Okay, this is... You were I'm so controversial. Big, Tony, you were so controversial. I'm not a big T... I have to... I do like TV... But sometimes it's too heavy, you know. Yeah. It's like I, it, I. Do you watch comedy? I do some, but Martell Martell watches really like she loves Ozark. She oh, loves like hand, Handmaid's. She likes heavy stuff. Really, I have. Uh, it really uh, it affects me. So it's yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's like yeah. it's like horror movies when people are like oh wasn't that great? I'm like no, someone's after me now. You right. know, it's like right. I can't. Right. I can't detach. What about what about heavy <laughs> reality shows? Like uh, these guys are tired of me talking about alone. Like these survivalist shows. I love it. I never got into it's it. It's too heavy, isn't it? It's it's that's right. a little. But here's the thing. Also, is sometimes when these stories are so heavy, and people are like, oh well, Tony, it's just. And Martel's like, you're an actor. Like, why can't you detach? Because in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, that might not be heavy, but someone's had that same experience somewhere, mm -hmm. and I'm you watching a visualization of that, and it's it's yeah. too it's too you much have paralyzing empathy. So I'll watch paralyzing sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'll feel everybody's feelings for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's like I I there was on YouTube. Sometimes I watch compilation videos of like. X Factor auditions, or I watch this the, really. The voice, the voice, and it, but I only want to see when they win. I only want right. to see like when they turn the chair and they come. I don't want to see any of the rejections. Yeah, I get. Well, it. now talk to me about about this thing, because I battle with this sometimes about exposing myself to yeah, yeah. news. Yeah, you know, yeah. like to nudes. Exposing to, yourself to, to nudes. To, to nudes, because if somebody <laughs> doesn't have a great. Physical, Body. No. Um, <laughs> news like if I I can take certain news, but other news about people that are going through just yeah 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 well, abject children. hunger, uh, you yeah. know, or you know, kids that are sick or something like. How do you do you do you try to keep yourself yeah not the head in the sand or anything, but no. uh, like I just I, I'm I, I it just kills me. It's yeah. too much for me. Now, keep in mind that's me. I, I think other yes. people can really absorb it and can detach from it. You guys. Have oh, I thought you were speaking for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I'm speaking for everybody. <laughs> I represent. I represent the human race. <laughs> Sorry, um, but you had you had Bill Maher on recently, and I listened to and he sure. like the, the amount of absorbing. I think he can have that kind of detachment. Probably, yeah. I just can't shake I it. Can't so, like, I'll yeah. do I'll do something called um, it's like this uh, like the skim. It gives like a sense like an email. And it'll give like a, the highlights of the day. Yeah, right. And so, or no review of the news. Yeah, it's like an oh, uh, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, I watch but, David Muir every night. Oh yeah, on ABC. Yeah. But any kind deep dive and kind of I just can't. 
I, it's hard for me to let it you go. You feel like what? Well, what? What else can I do? I mean, I'll, 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 I'll donate, or I can be a charitable, yeah. or whatnot. But if, if you get into all of the real micro detail of the yeah. suffering, it's see. It's but hard. that's but see. Jason got me into alone, so I started watching some Arctic something. Yeah. And so Amazing. I started watching like five, six episodes, and and a lot of times we would watch it while we we're eating dinner, right? We put on yeah, sure. alone the next episode. Yeah. While well, they're skinning a squirrel, it's that's fun exactly to eat right. Dinner. And the yep. guy, the guy, like hadn't eaten like one of the guys hadn't eaten like seven days, and he finally kills this like I don't know what a marsupial badger, I don't know what the hell it was, and he cooks it, chars it. He's like, oh, and he eats the whole thing, and um, and it's just really, and he cooks the head and he eats yeah. the head. It's just so disgusting. And then of course. He gets a stomach ache, dysentery, yeah. and he has so you a- skipped seasons. You skip. You didn't start. I know where. I know where that is. There's no way yeah. that you got there. He so started with start- the free stuff no, I started on six, Netflix. I started season yeah. six. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. He started. I did the same thing. That's what got me hooked. And then I went and I bought them all over on uh, what is it? History or something? They're on Discovery yeah. Plus, man. I love Discovery Plus. So do you watch? Do you watch it, or do you constantly imagine what would I do in that situation? Like, how would I react? Oh, to that I, situation? I would encourage the helicopter pilot to not even touch down. Yeah. Are you kidding? Alone, it's Jason's dream. It just, it, Jason's dream. He's by himself, and he doesn't have to eat. It's like the most amazing. <laughs> no, no, I would completely fall apart. I'm so soft. Well, you, yeah. I can't even put together a basketball hoop. Yeah, because the, the contestants you know? for Tracy, the contestants get dropped off in a helicopter. In the middle of nowhere, and the helicopter flies they have away. A, they have a camera. Someone's not with them with a camera. They have a right. Camera. They've got. They, they like, film themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the battle. They they talk about it a lot. Is is the, as they go deeper into the the day count. <clears throat> sometimes it's obviously the hunger, but also it's the the solitude gets them, and they start feeling. They do you know, lose a lot of great water weight. I mean, okay. but uh, Tony, uh, you know, I, mean, I, I I'm too I'm too emotional about the animals in there, so that's why it's hard to watch that. Not the humans, just the animals. Yeah. You mean that you couldn't kill the animals to eat them? Correct. Oh. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think's happening when you're going over to Chin Chin, man? Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I don't want to see it like you're like Jason's saying. I don't want to see it, but I'll eat so, it. So head in the sand. That's yeah. terrible. How long are they out there for? Well, the uh, longer you're out there, the the closer you get to the big prize. Uh, I think the longest has been a hundred days. I yeah. may be wrong, but I average is right. probably like right around. 70 80 days something like yeah. that and these guys lose like they they lose like 60 pounds in yeah, three amazing. months mm, that sounds months. interesting but how do they uh how do they charge their phone okay well that's a great yeah, they question they're not having okay, see that's the nowhere. whole point <laughs> it's no, a, yeah. but to, to film themselves idiot to film like to film their stuff Oh, now I'm the idiot. Okay, yeah, well, listen. Exactly. You are dumb. <laughs> so they, they have a pack. They have like a pack. They, they have like a whole pack thing. Well, you know what I noticed? Like they they keep their food. And they were like, oh, the guy's like, oh, the mice got into my food. I'm just like, you have that airtight Pelican box that keeps the camera equipment in. Put your yeah, fucking you put food in there, there <laughs> dummy. You know what I mean? God, so they have enough battery for. Just for that whole Tony, I don't know stuff. what their battery count is, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going. It's on. It's a hand really crank battery that. that they've got to uh, okay. save enough energy for. Dear Discovery, <laughs> <laughs> upon watching your show, I must admit that I was concerned about the battery. And we will be right back. Thanks to Hunter Douglas for supporting Smartless. I never used to think too much about the blinds in my home. I mean, I'd sometimes. You know, adjust them in the morning, close them at night, or just kind of forget about them entirely. I never really understood how much window shades could actually do until I discovered Hunter Douglas. Isn't that true? Like, you're like, it's like the last thing you think of are like window treatments. But Hunter Douglas offers unique shade designs that actually diffuse raw sunlight, casting a beautiful glow across the room. It's beautiful. They're available in a gorgeous array of fabrics and colors that create incredible style and the perfect finishing touch to any room decor. The best part about Hunter Douglas is their PowerView automated shade technology. PowerView allows you to schedule your shades to automatically adjust to their perfect positions throughout the day. How cool is that? From letting in light slowly as you awake to adjusting to block the hot midday sun or raising just in time for a perfect sunset. Innovative shade designs from Hunter Douglas make everyday living more beautiful, comfortable, and convenient. I love Hunter Douglas because of all the different things. They have roller shades. They have Roman shades. They have, like, you know, vertical blinds. They have... Anything you, any kind of shade or window covering, they have it. I'm personally like, you know, like a good wood uh, shutter. You know, I just think it looks classy. Um, and that the one I prefer the most is Heritance. Uh, it's just kind of like, you know, my style, my color, my aesthetic, all that kind of stuff. And right now, for a limited time, 
you can take advantage of special rebate savings of $100 or more on some of Hunter Douglas's most popular styles. Offer ends December 5th, so visit hunterdouglas.com slash smartlist today for details and take advantage of special rebate savings of $100 or more. That's hunterdouglas.com slash smartlist. Smartlist gets support from FanDuel. Football season is underway, so now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just sign up with promo code SMARTLESS. FanDuel, if you don't know, has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. You can combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. With live betting, you'll get updated odds on games that have already started. The app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Get your winnings paid fast. So sign up today with promo code SMARTLESS for your no-sweat first bet. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And uh, believe it or not, I'm actually really, really into football. I love it. And I've been watching almost every game this year. And so I'm really excited to do a deep dive into FanDuel. 21 plus exclusions apply. See show notes for full disclaimer. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey guys, I know I talk a lot about um, therapy, mental health. I think it's really, really important. I think it's important to address it even if you're scared to address it. And also, you know, I've been going through like a pretty rough time lately and therapy has really, really helped me get through it. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling, trust me. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. I know for some people, if you're new to therapy, it can be kind of like, uh, I don't know, embarrassing or feel like, you know, you're weak or something, but it's actually the complete opposite of both of those. Like I started going to therapy and now I brag about it because of the benefits of it. And because I'm telling you being on the other side of it, I'm telling you it is so good for you and you feel better. And that's what it's all about. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash smartlist today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash smartlist. Back to the show. Tony, what, what is the, you've done like a laundry list of so many movies and TV I've shows. got it here in front of me, Sean, if you're what, interested. You know, what, what, what is one of like, other than Veep and Arrested, of course, those two stand out. What's one of the best experiences you've had like on a set or with another actor and who was that? And like, mm. what are, like if somebody said, pinpoint the highlight other than Arrested and Veep, because we all know how great and special those were. Mm -hmm. Is there like a moment or a person that really kind of, Wow, that totally inspired you or blew your Unless away. it's a, an arrested story involving me, go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, I really, side note, I mean, it was, arrested was so crazy, fun and wild mm. and overwhelming and all that stuff. But, and the, but I, aside from that, I would say I did this movie called Nine Days with this director, uh, Ed Sonoda. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was such a beautiful movie and he was so, um, good at what he did and so calm and the movie is so beautiful and that's one of those that really I think about a lot oh, that's and then I just did uh, Being the Ricardos with um, oh, yeah. no Nicole uh, Kidman and Javier Bardem oh, yeah. and watching them really boldly take over those iconic roles that was really cool to be on the sidelines and watch that really that's cool and cool. tell me what, what are you doing right now you said you're doing a show over on Discovery Plus um, that's, uh, Disney plus it's, Disney um, plus. it's, uh, mysterious Benedict society. It's based on a children's series. Well, that's here. I'm doing a movie with my friend, Seth Worley called sketch, but, uh, I did that. Um, and that's, uh, it's a based on the series by a guy named Trenton Stewart who wrote the books. And it's just yeah. a beautiful, beautiful, uh, story. And I, I get to play twins. Do you really? You do? Yeah. I get to play twins on the show. An evil like one and a good one. 
Well, he's he's complicated, but he's like, yeah, the good one and like a one that's had a lot of trauma. Like a soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, tell me about that because there, there, I'll bet there are certain characters that you would not play. Am I right? Uh, I don't know if I think, if I'm honest, I think I probably w- would have said that in the past. Like I would have drawn a line, but until I hear the story, I don't know if I can draw a line of like what I wouldn't play. You know, because it's would yeah. it be would it would it would it be based on whether it's it's gratuitous or unredemptive or you know like could could you play a serial murderer? Yeah, okay. Well, you answered that really fast. But he's got a heart <laughs> of gold. He's got a heart of gold. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I could, but it's like, and even if it's not redemptive, I mean, it's an. I mean, you look at Veep, for instance. She wasn't a serial killer, but. You see that <laughs> you see that equation of this is what happens when you live a life of narcissism and never giving away. You right. Turn, you end in isolation and you end up, you know, bitter. Right. And so that's that wouldn't be considered redemptive, but it's what a what a great Cautionary story to tale. show that. Yeah. yeah, to show that equation. Yeah. Right. 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 What are the what are the kind? I mean, you have done. You're so known and obviously celebrated, and you've won awards for oh, your well, comedy. That's very nice. Well, it's true, and and you you've you've done these sort of you know. Great icon play these great iconic characters, comedic characters. Do you is there part of you that's like, okay, I really want to do because yeah. we asked this, we talked about this when we have people on the show all the time. Like, do you have this thing in your sights of like, I want to do a great this, like a great dramatic role that really shows this? Is that something mm-hmm. that kind of burns inside you? Uh if I'm honest, I think when I was younger, I was kind of I would say that. But yeah. I, I think I had different motivations of wanting to, I don't know, get attention or I don't know what it was. But now I think it's, it, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but the older you get, things just get a little simpler. Yeah. And it's like, and so it's not necessarily about those big markers. It's about, I would, I would obviously love, I love working, but I like, it's so much more about relationships. It's so much more about connecting and yeah. Who you are on set, but I mean, yeah. obviously, good stories. And you want to. I want to be careful. As I really believe, the quality in the story. of the work experience, yeah. right? The, the, the people works. you're. But yeah. it, that's that's really the stuff that is has longevity to it. I mean, the work obviously is good, but it's like what you, how you impact people on set and all that stuff. I I don't know. That's kind of as I get older. That's where you see the power in that. I, no, I feel I feel you on that. I I, I, I think and you're... like you guys, I think it's like so. I mean, <laughs> your podcast is so fun and just how you guys are with each other and the laughing and just like, and even like you touring. I mean, that's like, there's so much, <laughs> so much silly. beautiful, like life giving power. Tony, to yeah. that. Tony, I gotta tell you, it's so, it's so crazy. I mean, you know us, it's so weird. <laughs> that we're yeah. doing but it's it. like, I think it's so fun and just like, you can see that it gives you life, you know, like that's like, as you get older, like that's the shit that matters. And it did come from that pure place that you're talking about where it, yeah. we had, we had, no idea, dream, or goal Nothing. about the end result. It was all about, well, how can the three of us stay better in touch during COVID? You know, right, sure. And, and so we just kind of got a little bit more official, you know. Yeah, and but the element that you have of the surprise, because like there's two of you that come are coming in with an energy of like what's coming, right? And right, it's yeah. like that yeah. provides that. Ooh, that. Oh, what gift are we going to get today? And not as like a, <laughs> to build up arrested. But that's how I did feel like also on Arrested. Like we never, ever knew. what we, the, the whole show was just one big surprise. We never right. knew what Mitch was going to throw at us. And it gives you this like, it doesn't fit any formula. It's always the surprise. I, I remember, Tony, after, after se- between uh, seasons one and two, and we were all in, um, <clears throat> we're at a hotel in Century City. And we, we just found out that we won those, that we got nominated for, do you remember that? We were doing like the press that morning early. All of us and uh, I, d- uh, I don't. Okay, well I do. And Tony, <laughs> but- you and I were you and I were staying at that that hotel right there in Century City. I remember this. And then Jason, mm-hmm. you came over the night before. Oh. And then early that morning, we went and did a bunch of press, and that's when we found out that we had won. Um, we not won that we got all these nominations for the show. And I remember, <clears throat> so we're downstairs. We're really really happy. Um, and then Tony. We were talking to Mitch and stuff, and then <laughs> we were going to walk back in and go, what's going on? He goes, well, Mitch just told me that um, I'm going to lose my hand uh, to, a, <laughs> yeah. to yeah. a seal. And I remember, and yeah, I was like, yeah, to a seal. 
for the whole he's like yeah i guess for the whole season I, yeah. <laughs> yeah i was actually pretty i was pretty upset about it i know, you know now since you were talking about it, i remember now a picture of us down there it oh, was you do? yeah it, we were down there and it was I, I i remember that from a picture um but yeah i remember when he told me that and so you just said to Mitch, you said, so Mitch, well, so we're going to do another season. Yeah. What, you no, I had plans? an idea. I think I had an idea, a really bad idea. I think I might have even said, hey, what if oh, like, what if, like Buster's on like Dancing with the Stars or something like that? Or something just really out there. And he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about having a seal bite off your hand. <laughs> and I was like, uh, <laughs> and I just, I didn't even know how to compute it. What is, what is the, have you, did you ever have like a massive injury on that or Veep or anything that like, anything go absolutely chaotic and hurt yourself um oh for real he means for real for real for oh real. for real um yeah. you got to keep your knees bent with sean he's his questions he's this guy is a is a real no, maverick. yeah yeah i love that um well it's a surprise these, these are award nominated question <laughs> questionnaire um, <laughs> yeah. um did i uh I don't think uh, so. And then start thinking about your favorite theater story and yeah, crazy absolutely. ever happened on stage. But but let's hear about no, the anything favorite. ever. Did you ever hurt yourself, Tony? No, but I do remember. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, hey Tony, any 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 terrible I'm memories you want to relive? About, <laughs> I know what I was about to say. I'm trying to talk about trauma. anything other than arrested development. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. So I'm sorry, love, Sean. This is Sean, this is no, but you know, it's not a it. terrible question. Tony, have you ever broken a bone? <laughs> Honestly, no. It's a real question. <laughs> I have. I'm, yeah. I have. How'd you do I'm that? A little bit. I stubbed my toe. <laughs> oh, bless it. Walk us through that. <laughs> Was it to going for? Were you going for peepees in the middle of the night? <laughs> no, I was. I was stepping over my dog door. Oh, are you okay? You want, say it again. I was stepping over. I was stepping over my dog door. You can't step over a dog door. You'd go. Well, into the... no, because it was locked to keep the dogs in, and then I stepped over it and tripped and and fell on. Oh, dog gate. Oh, dog gate. Oh, dog gate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dog gate. Yeah, so sorry. Yeah. Dog gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's understandable. Any theater stories? Any um, any horrible. Any horrible theater stories? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Never forget a line up on stage, don't you? Well, I did. <laughs> I did. Well, you did that. Yeah, you did that play with uh, Molly, didn't you, Sean? Molly Shannon, yeah. Yeah. But I did, two years ago, I did a, a one-man play in San Francisco at ACT and uh, called oh, Wakey Wakey God. by Will Eno. And I was so petrified that I was going to forget a line. And I remember every night... Yeah, just, one man show. You're you got no help. Did, yeah, just feeling like I was going to forget everything, and then by the grace of God, I just I, I I always had. Thankfully, someone was offset in case I did. But I, but I started memorizing like six months before because I was so panicked I was going to oh, forget a line. But think. that makes me think, Jason. Um, I'll never forget being on set because I with lines I have to I have to kind of take some time with them to absorb. I remember you reading the script the morning of and then getting them. Is that correct? Like you would just skim the page? Yeah, and he's like a it? crazy, he has a crazy amazing I, crazy. Crazy. My brain works for one thing and it's that. Willie's really, uh, well, Will has got the Mary Lou Henner dates stuff down and also Gosh, uh, well, he, can so memor li he can remember lines. So he's got two uses for his brain. I only have the one. I mean, that, was, that show really taught me, was pretty uh, foundational for me. I've just kind of, a lot of lessons from that show for me, which mm -hmm. was great. I'm with you. Oh, me too. My God. Yeah, I think, and I think for our listener, you have to understand for us, and Sean, you're saying it, and you were sort of saying, let's not talk about Arrested too much. Oh, no, but, no, I'm, I'm But for us, I it was it. such a seminal moment, and, and yes, listener, I, I if love you, hearing about it. if you hear us making it about ourselves or whatever, we're just showering love because we're so happy and giddy to see Tony, mm. and it and it brings up so many memories that are really important, big memories yeah. from our lives, and we yeah. had this shared experience in our life that was a really yeah. big And we thing. used to spend more time together than our own families yeah, yeah. and we just haven't been able to do that i know i i love hearing about it i really do yeah it's also like it's also i'm sure you can relate to this sean it's also you think back to that time i mean almost you know almost 20 years ago and it's hard not to be embarrassed of kind of how you know i would react to certain things or because i was in this very overwhelmed state thankfully i was playing a very overwhelmed character so that kind of worked <laughs> <laughs> but just like I knew, I had never been on a studio lot. I had mm, never, wow. I didn't know 
I just didn't know anything. I never had that much free food offered to me during the day. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, what's yeah. everything? Nothing was computing, yeah. you know? And I would just walk around and... Your own parking space, yeah. And, yeah, my own parking space. Just to kind of, and that thing of like, you give something so much weight growing mm. up of like, yes. <gasps> that sitcom, that weight. And then right. when you get it, you're like, why am I still anxious? Why yeah. am I, I thought mm-hmm. I was going to feel differently. I was, and it's just uh, from that. Well, why, why, thankful, why did you feel, still feel anxious? Just because you felt then now that I have it, now there's pressure to, pr- now to deliver. Is that what Well, I think there's, it's a, it's a, it's a few things and, you know, thank God for therapy, but it's like, I really don't think I was very present for most of my life. I don't think I never mm. really, I would always be looking ahead of like, well, that's coming. That sitcom's coming. That big thing's mm. coming. Yeah. And then I got it and I had to go, oh, crap. I Because the thing is, if you're present and if you're in that time, then when you get something, it's just kind of, you know, it just kind of unfolds rather than carry this all this weight. And mm-hmm. I've said this several times and I apologize if anybody has heard me babble about it, but it's that whole thing of like, if you're not practicing contentment where you are, you're not going to be content when you get what you want. And yeah. I think that really hit me unarrested, you know? Yeah, I think that there's a very similar, I was talking about this with the, somebody the other day, you can't be, you, I, I try really hard, and it, not perfectly, I don't do it, I don't execute it perfectly, but I really think about this idea that I can't be at the effect of circumstances. And, and meaning that my happiness can't be, pegged to something outside because then it's you're in for a shit right because it's going to go up and down and nothing's mm-hmm. in a straight line and mm-hmm. you can't if i'm at the effect of other things i i have to it's not like i'll see it you know i'll believe it when i'll see it you know it, uh, um it's almost like i gotta believe it and then i'll see it my happiness has to come from here mm. and and it doesn't matter if i actually whatever happens outside of me mm. is going to happen Mm-hmm. Well, how do you how do you guys avoid um, falling into complacency or being m- more comfortable than is healthy with mm-hmm. normalcy or mediocrity? Like, in other words, how do you how do you balance contentment and mm-hmm. also staying uh, yeah. ambitious and driven and mm-hmm. and have goals and prepare yeah. for future and balance? I think, which is yeah. you know the easy. But how do you, how do you know how do you know what it is yeah. until you have the 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 clarity of retrospection, right? Yeah, and I think I think that's a great question because I, I'm glad you really glad you asked because it's not that I'm not I'm, it's not that ambition or dreaming is wrong at all. Mm. In our business, I feel like there's a subliminal messaging of like, you will have value when this happens. Right. Yeah. You will have value if this big thing comes into your life. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, my value before any of this happens is the exact same as my value now. Your value, when all, it's, it, your value doesn't change. And so I think with ambition many times, what I did is associated my value to getting that. Yeah. Right, your outward value as opposed to your internal value. Inter- more, yeah. No, I, I connected it. Like my, yeah. Without knowing it, my internal value, I can go back to that reunion and be like, hey, look what you made, you know, whatever. But it's like my internal value would be better if I got that stuff when in actuality, that internal value is the exact same. Yeah, of course. But that's yeah. not the message you hear, I think, in the business. Does that make sense? Yeah, for well, sure. No, c- certainly because you get, well, and it's easy to fall in. It's a trap. You can fall into it very easily. And it's very easy to, again, sort of peg your yeah. your your value, if you will, that let's say, I'll say happiness uh, mm-hmm. to, to out, outside things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're also, in, in this business, you're also... You're constantly being asked, like, "What's next? You know, what's next for you? What's next?" Which is a great question. Which is a great question. But you kind of don't go up to a dentist and say, "What's next?" You know. True, but this is a unique. This business is unique in that, at least for actors um, and also directors, and I guess anybody, um, it's very a la carte. Like you don't have one job that lasts thirty, forty years like a dentist would. Um, It is sort of you. You're constantly getting hired and fired because the jobs come to an end. So it is a natural question, but it is an annoying one to have to. But then sometimes when you do a show, when you do a show, it becomes much more sort of a pre fix you know yeah and i oh, wouldn't even say it i wouldn't say it i wouldn't say annoying because I, I i didn't i didn't mean that it's not annoying but it's it, it's a challenge for me to not always be looking to next right. you know it's like of that's, course it's easy to fall into that when yeah it is yeah. piecemeal together absolutely is yeah. loy at all interested in going into this business um she is uh not of no she's at but she did just get cast in uh steel magnolias at her school and she, no she's way. gonna be she, yeah she's gonna she's excited to oh, do that cool. and so uh but she wants to 
I mean, this could change, but she really is interested in education. Oh, teaching. cool. Yeah. Would you would you encourage her in this business if she did go that direction? I I would be lying if I didn't have uh, probably an, an anxiety attached yeah. to it and have to do a couple more therapy lessons. But um, I, you know, it's that whole thing of like you never want to dictate your child's you know right. path. So I would have to just I would yeah. I would be curious. That's the thing. Like as <laughs> One thing that we're with parenting is is rather than being reactive, be curious and just you know be like, oh well, because what I want to do is react and be like, well, let me teach you these lessons, <laughs> right? You know? And I just need to kind of shut up and just listen. Yeah, uh, it's hard. Yeah, I, I haven't yeah. seen her since she was, I know, six maybe or something like that. Little. You guys though made me laugh so hard. Like it is. Uh, there's a, I, I don't know if you guys watch, Sean, don't feel bad because I don't watch the episodes myself much, but I do every now and then we'll watch the blooper reels that they gave us <laughs> because that's the, that's the stuff that I remember. I'll watch those. And yeah, there's a, there's stuff. one blooper of Will and I <laughs> coming in and Liza's in the room and we have our robes on and we couldn't even get any <laughs> two words out. And just busted, but it was such a organic breakdown <laughs> that it just gives me so much joy to see <laughs> all the time. Well, there I just was a love ton it. of laughter on that oh, show. I really, really loved it. Isn't that why we do what we do? I mean, yeah. those moments. Yeah. I told you, I've, I've said I said this to David before, and I'm going to say it to you just so you can hear. We've talked about it, but that the hardest I've ever laughed, actually laughed in my life, anywhere. This is not just on set, just anywhere at any time was that scene when it was supposed to be an intervention for uh, Lucille and we all end up getting drunk and you're on the piano with your hook and and David went and got his his jean shorts and he put them in. He's dancing next to you and I'm on the table and Jason's got the wig on. He's got Franklin's wig on. And it was yeah. just like, <laughs> nobody said anything. It was just the mayhem. Absurdity. They just sort, yeah. sort of went like, go mayhem. And yeah, it was yeah. late on a Friday night and I had tears. Yeah. And you were just, and Tony was going like, dee, 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 and he was hammering on the piano like Buster's yeah. all happy. And yeah. David's dancing next to him with no shirt on in the thing. <laughs> and I was crying. <laughs> I remember driving home, and like an hour later, Mitch called me, and I was in the car, and I picked up, but I was still actually laughing oh my by gosh. myself. That's so oh. good. Tony, I mean, you guys were there for the hardest laugh I've ever had. Um, oh, man. That was so, so fun. Anyway, hi, Sean. Hey. So the um, show is Rest Development. It's on Fox, uh, what, Thursday? Sundays at 8, Sundays, 9.30. Sundays. Catch right. it on Roku. Tony, this is way too much time. It's already 5.45. You've given us know, bonus. It's so, it's so crazy. Uh, we went Tony, over. We apologize. And again, to our I listener, I, I'm so sorry uh, that we just, you had to hear us just fawn all over Tony and talk about the old days, oh, but... I, I loved it. I love. We just love applied. you so much. You're just. We you're do just, love them. You guys are the best, Tony. You're one of the. You're such an incredible, incredible talent, and yeah, and oh, on, guys. but but even above and beyond that, you're such a wonderful, sweet, sweet, just big, great huge person. Heart. Love yeah, you so just much. Love you so much, man. Yeah, same. Love Please you guys say hi to Marshall. I will. Yeah. I will. I will. I, will. Right. I love you too. Thank Tony. you guys. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Sean. I do. I love you too. I'd love to see you soon. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Hey guys, do can we, we'll do a reunion. Let's do it a reunion special, right? An arrested special. Do you want to say that? I think can we, just we say do. that on the. Would you guys do it? By the way, I'm just. Yeah. I'd do anything for arrested. Why wouldn't you do that? Always. Would you do it, Tony? Yeah. I'd yeah, go back to work course. tomorrow on that show. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Sean, yeah. come on, come join hi, us. Hi, Mitch. Hope you hope you're listening. Uh, Tony, love you. Love you, Tony. Love you guys. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Thank you oh, for doing this. So great. Thank you for having me on. Bye, buddy. Bye, bud. Um, guys, sorry. Who oh. was that? Who was who His name was that? Anthony Jay, Gale. Jay, that was such a great call having Tony. Um, yeah, that was great. I love that man. I, <sighs> I, I again, I apologize if it was to uh, our, our own little clubhouse, but I know. Um, no, it's it's really really fun to be a fly on the wall. I could hear story. I wasn't even there, and I could hear stories like that all day long, just about like who was on, what would happen. He's also anything that he says, I can listen to because he truly is. He's so genuine. I, I think we say this a lot on this show, but I think you'd be hard pressed to really find truly a nicer person. Yeah, that yeah, we've, that we've interviewed, and we've interviewed a lot of nice people, but. Tony is uh, is just made of all good stuff. Um, I've interviewed him a few times on like when I guest hosted like Ellen or I think Kimmel once or something. But um, yeah, he's I've hung out with, hung out with him a few times. Yeah, so great, great he's time. just so genuine and sweet and nice and uh, 
we he was he was so funny he would make us laugh and he was a great laugher and you could really get him um i, I, I had a really good theater story to share but oh, maybe i'll do it next time let's hear it um is it about the time that you um, uh, got an audition for Bye Bye Birdie? Bye <laughs> Bye 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 Birdie. Bye Birdie. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Grant Terry. Smartless. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.